Mixing low end can be a huge pain in the ass when you're first starting out. And if you listen to music the way that I do, the bass and the drums are something that I tend to feel more than I like actively hear the way I listen to melodies or lyrics. But it's important to know that that's not true for everybody, right? Some people are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum where at first listen, they only hear the bass and the rhythm. As music producers, it's really important for us to be able to have like an engaging and cohesive low end while still having those like catchy top line melodies. And since it can be kind of a pain, I figured I'd give you guys five tips I've got to help you out to get a nice clean low end mix. And sorry about my voice, I've got something going on. So let's hop into it with tip number one. Sound selection is everything. So your kick and the bass are probably the most obvious sound selection choices you have to make. So let's start there, right? When you're thinking about a cohesive mix, a really important consideration to think about is the nature of your sounds and what context they might be heard like out in the wild, so to speak, right? So if you decide you want a more organic sounding bass tone, for example, like a literal bass guitar, or like an upright bass or something, uh, you should think about what type of drums would traditionally be heard with that type of bass that's going to help guide you towards cohesion. So with a bass guitar, you're thinking maybe an acoustic drum set or maybe a cajon or something like that where like real human beings are playing real instruments. So it's not going to make a ton of sense to have this like insanely subby kick with like, you know, very little transient and all thump with a really organic sounding bass guitar that's got this kind of like high-end sparkle to it that cuts through the mix a little bit more. And on the same hand, if you've got this like super subby synth bass with almost no high end or mids, uh, it doesn't make sense to have a really clicky kick, right? So you want the two things to sort of have the same characteristics, you know, as a general rule of thumb. All of these are just gonna be general rules of thumb. There, there are no rules with making music. <laughs> these are just hopefully helpful guides for you guys to um, sort of approach your tracks and make it a little bit easier as you move on. But rules are meant to be broken, make stylistic choices and have fun, obviously. But if you're struggling with your low end, just stick around, we'll, we'll tackle it all. So yeah, if you got this super subby bass with like, you know, maybe a little bit of mid buzz, it makes a lot of sense to have a subby kick that takes up a really similar space as that bass, right? Because, you know, I'm not, it's not even a tip on my list, but if you're side chaining your bass to your kick, and your kick is like a bunch of low mids with no sub, and it cuts out this very subby bass completely. Now all of a sudden you've got this hole that's filled with just kind of like a clicky kick instead of like the sustained sub of the bass drops out for the, th the transient thump of the subby kick to come in, if that makes sense. So kick and bass sound selection, think about the nature of the sounds and in what context they might actually work together in the real world. That's number one. But that's not the only sound selection that matters a ton for your low end mix, right? There's obviously a bunch of other instruments and elements that you need to be layering together. And so you really want to think about like the nature of your synths and your keys and your guitars and all of the sort of like mid and melody focused things. I'm not talking about just like high passing everything that isn't a bass or a kick drum. Obviously, you can get phasing issues and get really thin sounds that way. But I am talking about thinking about your, your chord voicing, for example. Your root note doesn't always have to be at the bottom of your pad sounds or your rhythm notes. Uh, you can invert it to make a little bit more space without losing any character and end up with some pretty cool feelings out of doing that. Oh man, it's difficult to speak. So if you're thinking about your sort of mid elements, say like a rhythm guitar, right? If you want it to be a big chunky rhythm guitar, then you definitely need some low end still there, but there's probably some you know useless information below the tonic of your uh, frequency spectrum. I'll throw an example. Every time I pluck the guitar, there's all of this low information that's not really contributing to the melodic content of this. So by cutting that stuff out, we still keep all of the character of the sound without really like stepping on the bass and the kick, right? So sound selection, that is the most important thing. If you mess this up, nothing else is really gonna matter. So make sure you're paying attention to this part very carefully and everything else will be a breeze. But with all that being said, let's move on to tip number two, counterbalance complexity. So what I'm really talking about here is that your bass and your kick have this very deeply intertwined relationship. The rhythms should be completely complementary, and they should work together, almost never trying to step on one another. I'm not saying like every kick your bass note should change or anything like that, but like 
you definitely shouldn't overcomplicate the relationship between the bass and the kick. But the kind of more important thing to think about when you're trying to get a clean low end for a whole track is counterbalancing the complexity of the low end with the complexity of the high end. A lot of times, if you've got a really busy bass or kick part, uh, you want a simple mid and a simple high. Or on the other hand, if you got really simple mids, you're gonna want to have a slightly more complex bass part, right? Because if both of them are doing a ton or both of them are doing absolutely nothing, you're either gonna have this really chaotic track or you're gonna have a track that feels super boring. Uh, which brings me to tip number three. Bass is just a melody. This took me a long time to really wrap my head around, but when you think about it, the bass is simply a voice that's following, you know, a melodic progression. The same as your main melody, your counter melody, your chord progressions. The bass is just a melody, which means it should follow pretty much all the same rules of your other melodies, right? So I've talked a good bit about counter melodies on this channel, but in general, you don't want the counter melody and the melody to be stepping on one another, fighting for space within motion or within uh, frequency ranges. You wanna sort of think about them having a conversation and occasionally moving together. So it feels like a duet. This bass is just like that counter melody. You know, I think a, a good way to think about it is that if you can't transpose your bass line up, you know, one or two octaves and play it on like, say like a piano part and have it still sound good with the rest of your beat, your bass part is not cohesive with the rest of your beat. That's a really simple sort of like mental check of like, does this actually make sense with all of my other elements? Bump it up a couple octaves listen to it in that higher register. And if it's not meshing with everything up there, it's definitely not meshing down at the, the bottom end. And our ears might not be quite in tune the same way to listen to that and pick out the problems. But if you can get something that meshes up high, it's much more likely to be meshing down low. So tip number four is just to keep it where it belongs. I just told you pump it up a couple octaves to check it. But in the actual mix, you do not want the bass wandering all over the frequency spectrum, right? Again, rule of thumb, like if you're making UK drill, yes, your 808s are gonna slide all over the place, insane stuff, you know, stylistic and genre specific choices notwithstanding. A good rule of thumb is to basically find the range that the bass sounds the way you want it to and just try to keep it there. You don't really need to go much outside, like maybe one to one and a half octaves. You know, you wanna go with the root, the third and the fifth for the most part of a lot of the bass lines you're doing. And there's no reason to be jumping from, you know, root of chord one all the way up to fifth, an octave higher of chord two. That's not gonna make a ton of sense. It's gonna make it really hard to mix in. So just try to keep it kind of in the frequency range that you're meaning for it to be in. Oh, my voice. So tip number five is just to balance the whole track, right? I think this is probably an issue that a lot of people bump into. I know that I ran into it a lot myself where the low end will feel weird if the rest of the track is not balanced. So I highly recommend you grab a plugin like uh, Vox Go Span. It's a free like spectral analyzer where you can basically see like the relative loudness at you know each part of the full frequency spectrum. I'll throw a little clip of it in action on here. So the rule of thumb recommendation would be to try to shoot for something pretty close to flat at the, at least the most full parts of your mix. Um, you don't want like any huge peaks, especially, you know, you don't want a super high low end and you don't want absolutely nothing. That's gonna make it feel imbalanced and a little bit less cohesive, but that's also, you know, just like a rule of thumb. Stylistic choices are probably the more important thing. Do what sounds good, do what you like, uh, but this is a good tool to sort of check yourself and make sure that you're not falling victim to what I did, being that my speakers were far too small for the bases I was using and I didn't know that I had way too much bass in a lot of my tracks before I started using this. So yeah, super quick one. I just figured I'd fire off some tips for you guys. Uh, if this was helpful, definitely let me know, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button maybe. You know, we're on the road to 2000 subs. That's a pretty insane thing to say. But if you do enjoy this, you want more tips, leave a comment, let me know what you're looking for, what you wanna see me talk about next. If you think it'd be helpful for me to give you some more like concrete examples of each of these sort of tips, then I'd be happy to make another video about bass mixing uh, sort of in a project. Uh, so yeah, let me know. I will make whatever you guys feel like you need. Other piece of news, we did recently launch a Discord server and there's a little lo-fi beat battle going on in there. The winner will get to release their track with uh, my good friends over at Svalor Chill, a lo-fi label. So pop in there, go introduce yourself, say hi. 
uh and tear it up in this beat battle still plenty of time to enter so yeah hope to see you guys in there hope you guys enjoyed thank you for stopping by i'll see you next week peace